Hey guys, what's up? This is Coach Justin with Ultimate Baseball Training, and today we're going to be taking a look at Robinson Cano's swing. He's got a beautiful swing, probably, I would argue, the sweetest swing in the game. You know, sure, there's been greats like Ken Griffey Jr. that might have a little bit of a you know, more smoother swing, but it doesn't get much better fundamentally, mechanically, than Robinson Cano. And he makes everything look so easy, so effortless. So I thought he'd be a great player to just take a look at. He does a lot of things in his swing, like I said, really, really well. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learn a lot from it, and let's dive on in. All right, so the first thing that I want to point out to you is that this is Robinson Cano's swing. This is not your swing. And a common thing that I see youth players do is they, they go watch these videos where guys are doing swing analysis or they see a slow motion swing on you know the internet somewhere or on, on TV when they're watching a big league game and they try to just copy everything that they're doing. And these players do pretty much everything very, very well. But just because he looks a certain way or gets his body into a certain position, uh, you know, it doesn't mean that it's easily uh, replicatable by yourself. Meaning that, you know, um, sometimes you know you see players do a certain thing, and then when you try and do it, and you get in that same exact position, you didn't get there the proper way. So something that you're probably going to see in this video is his back foot will literally come off the ground when he swings. But if you just go to the field and you work on taking a swing and picking your back foot up, that's not the way that his back foot got there. His back foot got there by generating so much power and force and bat speed and using his body very effectively. That's how his back foot raised up off the ground. He didn't finish his swing and then say, you know what, I'm going to pick up my foot now. So that's not how it works. So just be careful and you always want to develop your own sort of swag with your swing. But that being said, let's dive right in. The very first thing that I want you to notice, uh, you know, this frame is just still right now. The very first thing I want you to notice is how relaxed he looks. His head's relaxed. His entire body just looks nice and calm and relaxed. So many youth hitters out there just seem so tense in the box, and you can't hit like that. Sure, your muscles are going to tighten up at the very last second, but you have to stay relaxed, especially in your starting position. So as we kind of go through this slow motion swing here, um, there we go. Okay, so he's in his loading phase. He just picked up his front foot there. And something that I want you to notice is his positioning here of his knob. His knob is facing the catcher. Sometimes guys get into really weird positions with their hands and they try to manipulate things. But just remember a good rule of thumb is when you're in the launch position, you want your knob to be pointing towards the catcher. That's a terminology that I like to use. But pretty much all he's doing is a weight shift back in his load phase, okay? He's picking up that front foot. And if you pick up your front foot, if you're just at home watching this, do it. Stand up, pick up your front foot. All your weight goes to your backside because it has to, right? Because you picked up that foot. So that's literally the extent of his load. He's not doing anything artificial with his hands. He's kind of just picking up that foot. Now, as he begins to move forward, uh, you'll see that he's starting to shift his weight towards the pitcher. A lot of times you hear coaches say, stay back, stay back, and they tell players, you got to stay back. Well, what they fail to tell them is staying back happens after a positive weight shift towards the pitcher. Okay, You have to have an aggressive move towards the pitcher before you land on that firm front side and you rotate around that firm front side, and that's really when you stay back. It's after your front heel drops. Uh, when you stay back, but you don't stay back th throughout the entire swing. That just doesn't make any sense. So watch him. Watch how much he moves forward. Look at this. He, you know, his his hands are starting to go back. He's walking away from his hands as his body weight goes forward and shifts forward. His hands go back, and then he lands, and he lands on probably at about a 45 degree angle with his front foot there. Um, and he lands on his toe. You don't want to land flat-footed or on the ball of your feet or definitely not on your heel. You want to land on your toe, and that way 
you know, it's really easy to adjust if you're kind of fooled, if it's an off-speed pitch. And then all he does from that point, if you look at his front foot, all he does is he drops that heel, boom, right there, and that's when the swing starts. And you'll notice this position here. Um, I talk about this a lot. This is a great way to generate some bat speed. His front arm is pretty much straight. It's not barred out, but it's pretty much straight with a little bit of flex in there. Uh, but he really creates a bow and arrow like effect. You know, if you were to pull a rubber band back, that's kind of the exact same thing that he's generating with his body here. You see a lot of kids, and they have that front elbow really, really bent. That's not the way that you want to do it. But, but the way that you get into this position that he's in right here is by having a weight shift forward towards the pitcher and simultaneously allowing your hands to walk away from your body. All the great hitters get into this position here. Okay, Knob is still facing the catcher. And the most important thing, guys, look how early. So the ball is just coming into the frame here. I'm going to stop it right there. Look how early his bat gets on plane with the pitch. The two most important things in hitting are getting your bat on time and on plane. If you are on plane with the pitch and then you're on time, there's no way you're not going to hit the baseball, right? So look at, you know, the, the baseball is way out in front here. This is where the baseball is way out in front. But he can, you know, if he's if he's super late, his since his bat is already you know, on plane with the pitch. If he's super late, he can actually hit it right where he is right now and foul the ball off. Or, uh, you know, on the contrary, if I fast forward it a little bit, he's not going to hit it back there. He's going to hit it pretty much right where you want to hit it. Okay, so there's there's his contact point. Um, but you know, having his bat bat on plane early, he's also going to stay through the zone a long time and have his plane his bat on plane late. So if he was, you know way far out in front of the pitch, he could still hit it way out there, or even way out there. You'll notice this power V position that he gets into with his arms. They make sort of like a, a, a V here, and they connect you know, all the way from the, the top of the bat all the way down this arm, and then this one makes a V. That's called the power V position. That's great extension there. And that's something that you definitely want to want to strive for is to get into that solid power V position. Okay, so there is Cano swing, absolutely beautiful there. One other thing that I want to point out to you as this is kind of going through, um, I want you to pay attention to actually two things I want to point out. Pay attention to his backside and his back knee, and the way that his back knee and his elbows and his entire backside kind of work together. This is after his heel drop, so coming up here in a second. All right, right here. Notice how his elbows and his, his, his uh, arms and his entire upper body work with that back knee simultaneously. Watch this as he turns. They turn at the exact same time, okay? One of them's not out of sync. They turn at the exact same time. He drops his back elbow into that slot there, um, creating a lot, of, a lot of whip and torque throughout the zone. And then pay attention to his back knee here. A lot of times you see younger players just kind of keep their back knee in that position there. They're afraid to allow their back knee to come forward. But watch this move here. He actually pinches his knees together and allows his back knee to drive forward. Look, his back foot is off the ground. There's dirt coming up there. It's off the ground. His eyes are on the baseball. He's on plane with the pitch, perfectly on time, and great things are going to happen. Beautiful swing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up button and get in the comment section below. Let me know. Do you like these swing analysis videos? Who else would you like to see me analyze? I'm thinking about doing, you know, Bryce Harper, Giancarlo Stanton, a bunch of different players. So get in the comment section. Let me know who your favorite player is, who you think has the sweetest swing out there, and I will try to do an analysis on them. Also, I want to share with you one simple trick that's going to boost your bat speed 5 to 10 miles per hour literally today. It's one simple thing that you can add to your swing. All you have to do is click on this image right here, okay? Click on that image. That'll take you to my website. 
um, and all I need is your email address okay that image is not going to work on a mobile device so if you're on your phone uh, just click the first link in the description but all I need is your email address and I'm automatically going to send you that free video where I share with you one simple trick to boost your bat speed I know you're going to love it so be sure to hit that subscribe button hit the thumbs up button leave your comments below and go check out the website to improve your bat speed and I'll see you in future videos